Oh yeah, let's do that streaming thing. <clears throat> All right, so we got quite the subjects to cover here. Um, oh no, this is the wrong picture. Okay, there we go. And we'll swap over. Transition. Oh, so hello to everyone today. Hello, hi, hi, hello. So we're going to be going through the history of Scotland because we've been playing Crusader Kings 3 and we're going to be playing as, well, the Kingdom of Alba because we'll be starting in uh, 867 AD and then we're going to be transitioning into 900. We're not going to transition 900 AD. What's wrong with me? Took a couple stupid pills this morning and they're just starting to kick in. So <clears throat> we're going to start with the early history of of what makes Scotland, Scotland. We're gonna talk about um, the Indo-European civilization of the Yamnaya, or what is sometimes called the Kurgan, as I like to prefer to call them. And then we're going to transition into Roman um, occupation of you know the UK as a whole for the, well, I guess of England. Um, and then talk about that early period after the Romano, Romano-British, or um, Britain-Romano uh, occupation into just like pretty much right with Kenneth uh, McAlpin. That's kind of where we'll conclude this portion of uh, the history for today. So let's get started on this. Oh, guys, Surreal Beliefs is in chat. Please go and check out Big Daddy Surreal Beliefs. He just started streaming on Twitch, so you can see him streaming um, a lot of ASMR. He said he's going to be reading from a number of children's books on his Twitch. Very PG, nothing offensive at all, and nothing um, very crude at all. So please go check out <clears throat> Surreal Beliefs as well as um, his YouTube and his Twitch. Please, 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 please. But let's get going here so our first picture here is of uh it kind of gives us an idea of of the i don't want to say immigration because that is not the term but i guess the migration of the yamnaya people now this is a theory this is not an actual set fact it's pretty much taking a look at um a number of remains from different locations and cobbling together some level of coherent or or fluent story or cogent story for how the gaelic people came to inhabit the majority of western europe into all throughout england and ireland now with the Amnaya, you get this kind of um this migration out from the pontic steppe and that's where that that's primarily where you see this colored right here and it creates another kind of hypothesized culture called the Corded Ware. Uh, this is where a lot of the Germanic groups come from, but the Yamnaya are supposed to really kind of predate all that around 6000 BC. Um, it's kind of this really early Bronze Age civilization that goes on to influence and create the Proto-Gaelic civilizations, the Proto-Germanic, the Archaic Greek, which is essentially the the precursor to Greeks, uh, the Italic. Um, all these things are very important important because this is how you get to where we get in scotland so the mni are pretty much that that influence across the board here you can see how this push is left and right you'll see another picture if i press the right button um you will not get accurate pronunciations julian i promise i think of the words over here that i have written on my my wall of notes uh bernicia i think i can get mercia i got obviously uh dalrita i've got but uh on for Bosak. I know, I, I know I messed that up. So expect a lot of terrible pronunciations. But this, these people, the Amnaya people, eventually kind of intermix with a number of other civilizations of the time, or I'm sorry, cultures of the time, and create a lot of what we get. And Bell Bell Beaker is another uh, hypothesis that kind of talks about how these proto-Gaelic individuals go on to create even more civil or, uh, cultures within them. So this is just to give you an idea of where the people of, and I think that's when I was kind of learning history, I'm like, how the hell did they get to England? And I, uh, I used to live with some uh, Hawaiian roommates and then one person once upon a time, a history teacher had told me that a certain plant or something from that it was, that is uh, now native to Hawaii got there because it was, on a log and it floated its way across or something like that and that's a joke i used to say to them like oh yeah yeah in hawaii because they got there because a, lo a log floated over right and they would always get pissed to me but i always did wonder how did people make it over to um england and it, it was essentially the gaelic people who expanded north and with gaelic culture you have got all of those druidic 
followings that quote unquote pagan um, religion that really kind of influences heavily into Ireland and Scottish culture and Gaelic culture itself uh, really pulls a lot in well, I'm saying Scottish culture itself pulls a lot in from the Gaelic culture of Ireland with Dalrida and with Kenneth McAlpin, which we'll get to. But that's just to kind of set the stage. Yes, there was a land bridge between Britain and Europe around uh, uh, until 6,000 years ago, around the time of 6,000 BC. So that is how they got there. Forgot to say that they walked. Um, but then when we jump forward, way, way forward, we start to get incursions into Britain. So this picture is actually from a really amazing YouTube channel called Fire of Learning. And I actually, can't, I couldn't find any good pictures online that describe, um, that describe, uh, that have a good map YouTube of, of the land, uh, of the lay of the land. So I pulled these from uh, Fire of Learning's book. Please go and check out his, his YouTube channel. It is really amazing. He'll cover like individual cultures and how their uh, kind of rise to prominence, their fall, all this action. But in that he has a really great uh, video on the history of Scotland where I pull a lot of my information from. So do you want to just plug that real quick here? So we don't really get much any, much of anything from um, anything in, uh, in this region, right? In Britain, in Scotland, in Ireland, until we get to around uh, 50, 55 BCE with the incursions into uh, Britain by Caesar. Um, and that doesn't happen. That, that's like our very early Roman incursions here. But there's nothing really that happens until we get into uh, 40 or 43 AD with Claudius and his initial taking of the southernmost portion of uh, England. And in that we get his conquest of Wales and of England, respectively. Cornwall is included into that. Wessex, everything that of those of those uh, regions. So you don't really see Scotland or or Ireland or just anything from the UK in general throughout history until you get to the very first Roman invasions into those locations, um, and then we start to get more and more and more information. Right? It's not until really uh, the seventy seven to eighty AD where Agricola uh, takes up takes up more of uh, England and Scotland as he moves north, goes into Strathclyde, stuff like that. And then we get into 11 AD or a 110 AD. Now this is an important date. And the why this is an important date is this portion right here, again, around where like Northumbria meets Strathclyde, um, gets pushed back by the Caledoni. The Caledoni are a people that inhabit what the Romans call Caledonia. Now, in this region, there's also the Picts or the Picti, the painted people, and there's also portions of the Gaelic um, Irish people that come over and they kind of inhabit this portion of land, and that becomes more prominent as we move forward in history. Um, but 110 AD is really the time when the Caledonians resist back against the Romans, pushing them out of this region and really establishing what becomes Roman Britain until the, the, the Romans completely abandon Britain. And you don't get the Hadrian, you get, don't get the wall of Hadrian or Hadrian's wall uh, erected immediately. It's just kind of like, okay, well, let's just, this is a bit of a stalemate. We'll sign some armistices essentially and, and, and end this conflict for now. And it's not until 122 AD, really 12 years later, when Hadrian's wall is created, which is this location from here to here. And, um, prop, uh, prior to what people might actually believe, Hadrian's Wall or the Antonine Wall do not signify the locations, the differences between England and Scotland. It's just a, a common misconception. Hadrian's Wall lies wholly within England. It has not, it has, does not that border between the two. So the second wall, the Antonine Wall, which is erected here in 130 or 140, 142 AD, 20 years after Hadrian's Wall, it's pretty much... They chose the portions of land that were that there was the least amount of land to cover, so they put a wall across it. So the Antonine Wall was erected here in 142 AD, and then Hadrian's Wall was in 122 AD. And what's important to note is, whenever you watch anything on this stuff, right? When you watch like the the best movie ever, King Arthur, <laughs> uh, you, that's probably one of the most recent movies in which you get a representation of Pix and Hadrian's Wall and Rome and Sarmatians are included in that too. A lot of really cool stuff. You get the invasion of the Vikings in the Viking Age. Um, all sorts of crazy stuff that just, just doesn't make much sense. But 
Um, what's important is the wall is always des- described as like beyond the wall is a lawlessness. It's not necessarily true. The wall was actually a location of a number of barracks, true, but the gates were actually trade hubs for the most part. The Caledonians or the Picts, the Picti, whatever, uh, could come through and they could trade in these locations, and the Romans traded as well. It, there, there was a lot of commerce that occurred at these walls and the locations in and out. It was mainly to stop large um, uh, armies from traversing back and forth, obviously, right? So these were defensive points for the Romans and less of like a, hey, we need to create these walls and keep everyone out and everyone north, uh, everyone, all the Caledonians north and all the Romans south. No, there was a lot of back and forth. There was a lot of trading and we get a lot of stuff that actually influences Romano Britons in the later portions of their history from this trade. So uh, 142 AD, We've got the the Antonine Wall, 122. Again, we have the Wall of Hadrian. And then in the 200 AD, the Picti, which become more prominent in Caledonia, the Caledonia. Uh, there's also the, the Scots are a part of this, but that's more later because they're influenced heavily from Dalrida. Um, the Picti start to really push back against the Romans. And then eventually the Romans just decide, this is kind of a lost cause here. So 410 AD, the Romans abandon Britain. They say, listen, it's just not for us. It's too far from the Roman heartland. It's too far from Rome itself. It's too hard to get troops reliably over into Roman Britain when they're already fighting a number of Germanic issues, a number of issues over in the Balkans. It's just no longer a a good investment. So the Romans recall from Roman Britain and pretty much leave it to its own devices. And this is something that you see a lot, right? When when the Western Roman Empire falls, Romans think they're still Romans for a long time, uh, Roman citizens at least. And even the Eastern Roman Empire, which uh, by distinction through the 16 and 1700s, we've called and coined the Byzantine Empire. uh, The Eastern Roman Empire still saw themselves as Romans. The world regarded them as Romans. So when we move forward here, the button there we go we get to around 580 ad and this is when there's a lot of different cultural upheaval in the i'm just going to call it the uk because it's easiest to encompass everything with this um we've got uh, really some primary cultural groups here we have the anglo-saxons uh who kind of mainly the angles right who invade on the eastern portion and create bernicia mercia wessex east anglia all the things that we know that become the common names of what is in (laughs) england for the most part today right then we have the britonic kingdoms now these are the romano britons that are left over when the romans leave and this crew includes strathclyde it includes welsh or i'm sorry wales cornwall those are examples of britonic kingdoms and then we have two other bigger kingdoms the Gaelic kingdoms, namely called Dalrida, and then the Pictish kingdom, which calls its kind of its capital in Fortru, Fortru, for I see, I knew I'd, I knew I'd butcher a name already, um, but that is pretty much what is left after the Romans leave. This is kind of how things break apart and and find themselves into their own kind of natural order, and. From here, things kind of start to get a little spicy and dicey because for, for the most part, for about like almost 200 years, nothing really happens until the Viking Age really starts in 793 AD with an attack around here on Strathclyde, Northumbria with an attack into it's like a, it's like an undefended um, monastery. And it is important to note that around 500 to that 700 date with the start of the Viking Age, Christendom finds its way into these lands and really it inhabits all the Anglo-Saxon Britannic kingdoms and Pictish kingdoms. Um, it, it gets a foothold in the Pictish kingdoms. It's not as prevalent, but it does start to grow quickly as you get into the Viking age. So you have people which are essentially pagans, which don't, I'm saying essentially pagans, like I'm like, oh, an easily described word, but to these people, which are essentially pagans, uh, the, 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 all this whole region looks at these guys and who the hell are they? They're all pagans. They, they worship a hammer and they come on boats that look like dragons. <laughs> and, um, this creates, um, what is kind of like a little bit of a cohesive point, right? Because two years after the Viking age starts in 795, there is the sack of Iona. 
And that is around right there. And this is when the Vikings kind of realize, like, hey, this for the most part is an, a land that is not unified. It does not have any kind of real harsh or a real good standing army. And there's plenty of verdant land for them to take advantage of. You have to remember the Viking Ages started because of an impetus to want to leave uh, Norway and Sweden. A lot of the, the, the big sub supposition is that there was an overpopulation. There was a need to expand into regions that they could take advantage of farmland um, and just have their own little piece of land for themselves because it was, again, quite overpopulated. And as they attack here into Dalrida, we get a, um, a unifying force of the Pictish kingdoms and Dalrida against the Vikings. And in this, in this great sack, in this great battle here on the beaches, uh, both of the kings of both Dalrida and the Pictish kingdoms die. And, and that is going to be kind of a bit of a, a reoccurring circumstance for the history of Scotland is its early kings dying in battle almost all the way up until King Longshanks takes over uh, Scotland basically through the succession issues that happened in the mid-1200s. So get used to me saying that this king dies in battle. But with that, we have, uh, for the most part, like, like a 30, 40 year of general upheaval between Dalrida and the Pictish kingdoms. Now, the Pictish kingdoms themselves are divided up. Uh, this is another good map here that kind of shows um, how everything's kind of divided up with Strathclyde here with the Pic Pictland, or which is sometimes called Pictavia. Um, Dalrida on the left over here, Mercia, North Wales. You have Wessex down here, Sussex, Essex, Kent. So just a, another kind of state of the world in 802 to give you an idea again of how this all looks. But um, and again, another map of that as well. The Scotty is another important. I forgot to talk about the Scotty. Look at me. I'm so dumb. Let me press this button and go over here. Right around here, you have the Scotty, which eventually, of course, become what the name of the land was, what the land was named after Scotland. And the Scotty are picks with heavily a heavy Gaelic influence into them. So they are a minor portion of the Pictish kingdoms, but obviously rise to prominence towards the later portions of this history. Now, here is all the Pictish kingdoms kind of broken up. And you can even see it shows you Pictish, Britonic, English, and Gaelic kingdoms and their modern cities, counterparts, and where they are on the map. But when we get to 834, we see a really important individual step into the ring. ring. And his name is Kenneth McAlpin, and he is arguably considered the founder of Scotland, the gentleman, who, the first real high king of it all. And he goes from moving everything to Fortru to Schoon. He gets crowned in Schoon, and that becomes the place where all uh, kings of Scots are now going to be crowned. He is the high king of Pictavia of uh, the Pictish kingdoms, and he brings to the table that heavy, strong Gaelic influence. His nickname is On First Bach, the uh, Conqueror, as it is called. And again, I, I apologize for mispronouncing any and all Gaelic terms, which I promise I will. And this kind of unifying force, he becomes this high king. And what that means is that this isn't a, a fully unified Scotland, but all of the other kings answer to the high king they have their own independent kingdoms and they do their own independent things but if you know push comes to shove the high king can kind of rally everyone around him and he reigns this way from 834 a.d until around 858 but in 843 a.d we get some other fun stuff here that happens right again he's crowned in schoon that's when he becomes this high king of scotland and he brings the stone of the stone of destiny to schoon which is there today it's a replica it's a it's not the actual um <laughs> scotland belongs to the scots <laughs> good one crochet um but what this also includes is the gaelic culture spread throughout scotland including the language of scots gaelic which starts around this area down over here and spreads kind of north um uh, it's sort of homer uh arian i am talking about gaelic it's not it's not uh it's not that yet um so he goes on to reign until 858 uh, and 
actually dies peacefully. His brother takes over for him for four more years. His name's Donald, and then he dies, and then his son takes over, Constantine the First. And this is in 877 AD, and kind of setting the stage for where we're going to start our campaign here today in 867 AD. And Constantine the First um, has a lot uh, to deal with, right? Oh well, there's there's this map here. You can see. I was actually looking for where is it? Well. Unfortunately, I, I, I thought I had a map of Danelaw, but um, this is probably even a good point to start the game off. So we'll start the game off and we'll look at it from that angle. But at this point, you have the sons of Ragnar Lothbrok who have taken over a huge swath of eastern England. You have got a lot of uh, the Isle of Man, of Shetland, of the western and northern portions of Scotland taken over by the Norse. For the most part, the Kingdom of Alba, which does not become the Kingdom of Alba until around 900 AD, is surrounded by Norse, by, by Viking invaders. And Constantine's, you know, lot is pretty laid out for him. He has to resist these people, he has to make alliances, and he does make an alliance. He makes an alliance with um, King Alfred of Wessex. And this is what's going to kind of set the stage for what we're going to jump into here today. And it's just kind of interesting here too to see just how much culture kind of comes from all portions of the map here. Before stream <laughs> No, we're not going to get into William Wallace. Why is why is the starting date 867? It's because that is a uh, that's associated with the uh, the Wrath of the Northmen type thing. The whole big great army. We switch this. 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 Just like eight. Just like ten sixty six is like the the conquest of England by the Normans. Yeah, you do have that indeed. So right here we start as uh, King Constantine the um, second, because I thought I thought Constantine the second came up in like. The later portions. I thought it was still Constantine the first. I could be wrong there. If you guys do know the 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 lore, the history a little bit better, feel free to correct me on that. But the lands of this region are, of course, which was moved to the England for centuries, has been returned to Scotland and, and is currently in Perth, which isn't too far from Schoon. Oh, that's cool to know. I didn't know that. Thank you. Oh, I thought the stone that's at Perth is a replica. The lore of Scotland. Read the fourth edition lore of Scotland. <laughs> uh, well, the reason I'm saying Constantine is I'm saying the anglicized word for it because I can't pronounce Constantine Cal without it being offensive. <laughs> but I've got some mods active here today, so we'll go. We'll uh, kind of jump into those really quick. Um, actually, we'll we'll jump. Uh, We'll do this real fast. Go ahead and go to library. We'll go to here. Workshop and you guys can see my mods real fast. I'm going to take a picture of them too. I forgot to do that, so I'm just going to do it right now. We'll go to subscribed items. Make this maximum warp. All. I hope for those of you that know Scottish history better than I do, this was this was okay. Okay, mods one, and here we go. So we're gonna put these mods in the description, so that way, if you want to see what I'm running here, you can. By the way, if any of you are excited for Total War Warhammer 3, please go and check out my Nexus store to pre-order your copy if you have not, or if you plan on doing it. Uh, all this week, weekend, we all get like a substantial, we get 100% of the margin. So basically the way they negotiate things is like, hey, um, we're going to give you 50% of the, of the margin we negotiate with the developer. And the cool thing here is that they give us 
sometimes every so often like fit like 100 percent of that margin because it's like hey you know here it is merry christmas stuff like that scotland campaign mods here we go that hidden copy link we got 300 of you bros checking in here today too thank you very much for jumping in today guys please 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 by all means Go ahead and okay. So what what timestamp are we at? We're at uh, thirty one twenty eight. Okay. Um, go ahead and like the stream. It helps me out a ton. Hey, we got a donation. I'm gonna, I got to see what that says too. God. I pressed every button wrong today. Let me look what that donation says and we'll get us going. Uh, oh, it was a massive one from Richard Lamaru. It says, thanks for the history lesson. Always great to see some learning before some video games. Can't wait until Warhammer 3, but your streams and videos help me make, make the wait less painful. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you very much, man. Very much appreciate that, Richard. You're the best. Been here for a number of years at this point. Been here for like two years. I want to say uh here's the link that it should show you all of the uh mods i have active what's up noob what what is up noob 223 how you doing dude have i, have I pronounced my practice my scottish national anthem i definitely have not we're going to play this like Iron Man mode. I can't turn on Iron Man mode, unfortunately, because of the mods. But I wanted to have some fun with mods, so this is what we're going with. We've got the Kingdom of Alba. Uh, this is similar to Hearts of Iron. It's the same company. Arbitrary, patient, and generous for our starts. Um, I could start as... A lot of people wanted me to start as the High Chieftain of Moray. As well from living in Scotland. Thank you, my Scottish wife approved. Thank you, Julian. Always appreciate it, man. Thank you for jumping into and watching. Uh, mods do block achievements, unfortunately, Madra. Just the default ruler. Uh, we're trying to stick to a more historical playthrough. Thank you very much, Apex. And also, direct him towards... If he wants more fantasy lore, direct him towards Loremaster of Sotek. And if he wants more 40k lore, direct him towards um, Wolf Lord Roe or uh, Baldurmort. Both great guys. Like, watching... Like, I follow Wolf Lord Rowe on uh, Instagram, and he just consumes so much content. He reads all the time and rips through it so fast. Yes, our goal will be to take over Britannia as a whole. Are you playing with the I Will Roleplay handicap? For the most part, Zen. Not like... We, we will, like, power game some stuff, but not all of it. Let's also take a look here real quick just to kind of open up the Dynasty tree and show you guys what I was talking about. All the streams and all your CK3 content, your vids help me get through all my grading that I have to do every week. Well, thank you very much, Noob. And I'm glad to see you on the, on the stream for the first time. And thank you very, very much for the donation. Yeah, Wolf, Wolf Lord Rowe and uh, Baltimore are great, great folk. So, I don't know if this shows me... So Kenneth's name is is wild. I don't know. Like the actual Scottish name for Kenneth is way harder than I can than I remember. <laughs> These people are all from Dublin. I was looking to see if we could see the, uh, if we could see that kind of lineage somewhere. Because this is, this is, I believe, his house. McAlpin, or Alpin. I don't think so, Homer. 
I don't even know the regiment we start off with. I can't remember. Oh, it's Catholicism. Okay. Insular is up through here through the northern portion. This should be a very interesting campaign. I'm very excited for this one. Let's like look at him himself. It's Ten intrigues. Maybe we go a little bit of an intrigue playthrough here, huh? He's got some good learning. Ivar the Boneless. Ivar's around here. We'll probably we'll probably smash that out, Quinnick. Northumbria, Strathclyde. So what are our... Let's take a look at some quick objectives here. The game is really fun, Marty. It's got a very high learning curve, though. I will tell you that. I don't own the crab outfit. I wish I did. So I think first things first, we have to... And the nice thing is that we have Tanistry. Tanistry, Elective Law, on the Kingdom of Alba title. So I think we have to... Our first order of business is going to be to unite the Kingdom of Alba. That will be our first priority here. So that means taking Strathclyde and taking over um, Sudrear, Su Suryar. Someone can tell me how to pronounce that and I, I, prom I promise I'll try to learn, but I butchered it. Let's take a look really quick at our vassals. Everyone seems to like me for the most part, except for this guy. I mean... You can tell about him. Cares about him? I don't. I'm not gonna care. He sends me provocative feet pictures in the middle of the night and says, hey, you up. What? Wait until Boneless dies. He's incredibly strong. I don't know why you would say that. <laughs> I don't know why you would say that with this giant army here. Gerthimus Maximus. Sooth Rayar? Okay, thank you. So is that little that little D symbol, is that like a TH sound? Yeah, honestly, I couldn't get into, into Crusader Kings 2, but I love Crusader Kings 3. Okay, your second line to inherit Moray, first line to inherit the chiefdom of Moray. Not endorsed by the bishop. Okay, well that's something we gotta... Uh, Sway him, or I'll have him probably educate a child to be honest. Do I have any children? I do, I got one little guy. I got a little heir. Seems to be not anything crazy. And you got 14 learning, so here I'll have him educate my kid. And my kid's nothing crazy, so. Marshal, is there anyone worth replacing here? Your master of horse and champion. So this guy's just a badass. This guy. That's worth swapping right away. Because they have the same military. Oh, his military is slightly lower. We are Catholic religion. Okay, let's swap him here. He's better there. Buy master. <laughs> and swap him here. <laughs> Although, I'm going to keep him here because I want... Even though it's one point better, I'd rather have him on the council than not, because he's he's a duke. So he's going to summon up a little bit more men. We want to keep him happier. Uh, Geed, on the other hand, he's just a dude, right? Yeah, you're just a dude. So let's go ahead and reassign these two. Can I swap them? And I have the minor titles mod, so that adds some fun ones here. Valcor. Hey, Jarl the North. Thank you very much, man. Jarl, I saw you joined the Patreon too, dude, so thank you very, very much. Wanted to wanted to personally thank you. I knew you'd I knew I would see you in uh stream, so thank you very much, dude. I also have the community flavor pack, which adds some really cool looking guys here, or cool looking um customization options.
Good, good. Yeah, guys, if you want, if you want to talk shop about Warhammer, if you want to talk about Age of Sigmar, if you want to talk about uh, Magic the Gathering, Crusader Kings, Banner Lord, Total War and Period, please go ahead and join the Discord. You can find a link in the description. I'm sure I'll set up some sort of uh, trigger for it sooner than later. Oh, by the way, that reminds me. I gotta tell the Discord that I'm streaming. 350 of you, or 250 of you bros checking in here today. Thank you very, very much, guys. Really appreciate you coming in and watching the fun stream today. Throwing out the Brodia, my bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, how much money do we have? We have barely any, so we won't be doing anything fancy with money. That's for sure. Um, nominate a successor. I suppose we could wait. Have an empty council position that I think we'll just assign to our best. Uh, guys, a champion. Oh, oh, okay, champion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dumb, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. Yeah, that's right. We're tribal, aren't we? Nigel! $5 donation saying, Missed the live Warhammer 3 video. So sorry to ask this here, but do you think they will change any starting positions for the new Mortal Empires for older races? <laughs> Nigel, uh, if you watched Indie Pride's video on this, uh, him and I were actually talking about it. And... Or his stream. And him and I are both in agreement that... An agreement? In agreement that Tretch Craventail needs to be moved to Crookback. Um, I, I just think like stuff like that needs to happen. Um, if they were to add stuff like uh, what's his name, the Vorath, the Black Prince from the, the Border Princess, who's actually a Shigoi vampire, he needs to have his proper like um, applications. I, I think that we might see some tweakings. Talos, thank you very much, dude. New member of the channel. As I always say, guys, members help me out a ton because it allows you to have access to some really cool custom emojis. I got some cool new Kiss Love ones I'm going to be popping in here. But thank you very, very, very much, Talos. I appreciate that, dude. Okay, yeah, we start as tribal, right? Yeah, we're, we're a tribal kingdom. So this is going to be a little wild here. And by the way, this is how I approach any and all campaigns. I spend so much time here in pause. What up, Jack Harvey? We'll be reclaiming Britannia. That'll be our uh, goal here. Changes to Gallic versus Gaelic. Nickname Tuatha de Danon. Doesn't that mean something about the king? Something king? Or like king of all or something like that? So we have to completely control this whole region here. But that will be our our short that'll be our, our goal for this campaign. So we need also we need to find a position here. So a good way to do this would be let's go to my realm. Dude, look at this guy. Peter gonna be the court physician and he's gonna be great at it. He has Pictish, which is kind of I don't like having conflicting, uh, what's it called, cultures all over the place, but uh, this guy would make a great physician. Oh, he's not in my court, that's right. He's in my realm. <laughs> Rooster Cogburn, <laughs> what a great name. I forgot to use your link when I purchased the game. Thanks for convinc convincing me to buy it. Thank you very much, man. Not a problem, dude. I'm, I'm, didn't even mean to convince you, but I'm glad I, I'm glad I did. And thank you very much for watching and and enjoying. Watha de Denon was the Irish pagan pan. I'm hopefully we'll get a hopefully we'll get a DLC earlier this year. I'm so excited for a potential one, guys. Like. Thank you. I'm doing this because I want to... I'm doing this stream because I want to play so bad. And I just want to share that with you guys. Uh, does being a good physician mean higher learning? The higher learning, the better physician. Jack Harvey, typically, yes. 
or having the associated physician skill. But to be totally honest, you will build those physician skills when you're in the slot. So we need to arrange a marriage here between Peter. I really could just do anyone here. No, I think I think Hearts of Iron 4 is more difficult, to be totally honest. So if I want him to come to the court, I have to do a matrilineal marriage, if I am correct. Someone, I just want to make sure. Because I am not, he is not a, a male dude. <laughs> what does that sentence mean? He is not my courtier. Yeah, matrilineal. Okay, this will bring him into my court. We'll let that go off in a second here. I also have this really cool thing. Oh, right here. That allows me to say, okay, um, Knight Manager, if checked, characters of my dynasty can serve as knights. I don't want anyone on my council as knights. Wow. What did that do? My marshal and champion, my court champion and champion. Well, he's okay to be on there, but I will forbid my marshal. I will forbid my steward and my chancellor. And I'll forbid my... Well, I don't really care about him. If he dies, he doesn't like me, so that's not my problem. Forbid my spy master, though. What's up, Rocket Man? We're Catholic, Jack Harvey. KM starts for Night Manager. So, if unchecked, the character is excluded from the Night Manager settings and can be a knight. So, let's say I said, you know, I don't want anyone on my council to be, um, I don't want no council members as knights. But you know what? I do want this guy as a knight. I can uncheck that and it will go through. So, we are going to need more champions. We are at a tragically low amount of champions right now. We can't search for any because it's too expensive. Well, we can cost that. It's just we're not going to be able to bring them into the court, unfortunately. What's the local culture? You adopt the Pictish culture. Culture. I think we want to stay as uh, Gaelic, Gallic, or actually, that's a good question. Are we the leaders of this? Okay, so we are the. So we're the leader of the culture, so that's nice. Oh, that's right, we're tribal. Good call, Outpost. Tribal is like four dollars or four gold coins to, to, to recruit someone. Um, that's Irish culture, that's Pictish culture over here. I think we want to stay as uh as Gaelic, right? You guys agree with that with me on that one? What are we currently working on? Cassus Belly. to take this will at least be quick 27 years because we're, we're stacking both the fascination and the focus which is uh, kind of key here um yeah people have said like hey which is better ck2 or ck3 i honestly think ck3 is better because i like how streamlined the ui is CK2 has got like, what, 10 years behind it of DLC and mod support and improvement. So CK2 is clearly in a, is always going to be in a better, more stable state until CK3 rolls out DLCs and we get um, some of those really amazing mods like the, the Lord of the Rings one fleshed out more. So there's going to be a lot of, I'd say CK3 has got better potential now than CK2 did at this point in its, uh, its life cycle. Okay, so that kind of squares that away. Let's get a, a wife going here. Oh, and let's 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 choose this, a lifestyle. So we have a natural 10 and a natural 11. Let's look at our actual we are generous, patient, and arbitrary. And we start with am amateurish plotter. So, do we go intrigue guys or do we go learning? What do you what do you guys want to do? I don't know, Zen. I like I like uh, Stellaris a lot. 
Yeah, uh, Joe, they're making... There, there already is a Lord of the Rings mod. <laughs> Rocketman AE dropping a $5 donation saying... Don't mean to cross chat. Convince the boys of the pot sticker hot sauce idea. I'm expecting the new DLC of Chaos. No one wins. <laughs> um, I don't. We we've talked about doing like a two um, McDonald's burgers and cutting them up. Well, let's do this. Let's do a, a poll. So I'm going to start a poll here real quick. What lifestyle focus? And our options are intrigue and learning. We already start with three points into diplomacy, which I want to take a look at. And the way you're going to vote for this is we'll use a uh, we'll do like a, like a three minute timer on this. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to press start. You're going to type in exclamation point vote space zero for intrigue or exclamation point vote space one for learning. So there you go. And it's like like this. I know McDonald's is trash. That's why it's a punishment if you lose Rocket Man. So that's how you vote. Votes coming in hot and heavy here. 20 votes for intrigue, 10 for learning, 22 for intrigue. It's going up really hard. And good. Looking at 14 for learning. Jump up to 15. We're going to 25 into intrigue. How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? We got three minutes on this timer. Let's keep it pumping and rumping over here. Stop. <laughs> Tell us, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I personally think Intrigue would be a lot of fun because this guy's back's against the wall, basically, you know? It's 21. Oh, man. It's 27 Intrigue to 22 Learning. It's on a timer, so it's going to end itself. Another donation. Jarl of the North dropping in $2 saying Dark Lord of the Scots. <laughs> Damn it. What's the most useful of the five? Jack, it just kind of depends, man. Um, learning is pretty broken. Um, but so is d diplomacy with being able to buy land, but so is intrigue with kidnapping people and converting them. But you have a lot of, uh, you have a lot of options. Thank you for the donation. Stewardship is good, brings in a lot of money. Keep voting, keep voting. Yeah, br diplomacy is super broken. It's going to it's going to shut itself down. The timer's running. It's got it's got one last minute, and then it's going to call the vote and it's going to say who won based off of the votes that are currently active. So exclamation point vote zero for intrigue. Exclamation point vote space one for learning. Uh, learning can be really fun. If you're going through certain portions of your life, like if you're at the end, you can go through a lot of stuff with the um, uh, the one that increases your life. Yeah, learning is mandatory if you want to create your own religion. You need that 50% uh, reduction to that. Right from the, I think it's like the, uh, back here. Uh, where is it? Profit. Oh, yeah. Faith creation and reinforcement reformation cost minus fifty percent. Boom, there it is. Intrigue won with thirty-three votes. Learning was at twenty-four. So we're gonna be going with intrigue. So let's decide here what we're gonna do. What are my diplomacy perks, by the way? Room to rule. Oh, nice. Part of the family. And personal scheme success chance. That's that's great, actually. Okay, so let's jump over here. Um, how old is he? Let me check that. He's 25, so I don't think we need to worry about fertility. Um, you can switch to, like, temptation focus, 
to get more bonuses from um, seduction schemes and such. But also, if you're older in age and your fertility drops, you can use this to kind of counter off, uh, kind of counteract it a little bit. But I think intimidation or skullduggery is what I'm thinking here right now. Um, and we'll decide which one to go down. Seducer is kind of fun. I kind of like Schemer a little bit more. Schemer gives us intrigue and hostile scheme power, so we can do a lot of murdering. Uh, Torture is pretty interesting here. You want to die uh, Because it gives us a lot of uh, prowess. Yep. Um... Which one did you want in learning? You said at least one point in learning is essential for all your innovations are going to take forever. Do you want scientific? You know, that's actually not a really, that's not a bad idea, but Yeah, eventually, Evelation. Oh, eventually, for sure. The reason I stopped is because the patches were coming out and they were kind of breaking stuff. So let's go down Skullduggery Focus and go into Schemer for a little bit. Um, this fast Scientific is a really good point with Fascination, but Pedagogy is also really solid, too. Rewards can get additional skills and can become your friends. It's, it's a very solid skill. Like I really like the learning line, but... I really want to jump into this. We haven't really done much of an intrigue play together, so let's just have some fun with that. And we'll jump into it later as we kind of uh, um, have some fun with that. Let's also find ourselves a wife. Uh, this is probably one of the more time-consuming portions, but all we got to do is look for inheritable traits. And honestly, we don't need to find the beast of the east here. We don't need to find like the the genius. If we can, great. If not, eh. I mean, she's doesn't she come of age in a year? This isn't a bad call. Scottish Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> oh, Jack. Pretty funny idea. We can make Herculean kids. Oh man, robust and fecund. Oh, my lady, this is Swabian. Cecilia brings beautiful to the table, bringing that fertility up. Dude, there's a lot of great options here. Willowberg. Great Hills of Eyes Kingdom. I will do a Wincest Kingdom for you guys. I don't like to get anyone above my age. Like, my age is kind of like the bracket. I just want to go down the see all the way. Chieftess Aud Althir, right? The, the D is kind of a TH. Of the deep minded. Realms Inheritance Law. We have Tanistry, noob. So uh, they will vote. Some by, uh, I like to do age first, Jake, just to kind of get an idea for which names to look out for. Um, and then I do uh, the sum of age. But let me take a look here. Um, the biggest thing is looking at their traits because getting someone who's got this is... Oh, could you imagine lustful and fecund? She's just going to be popping them out from all over the court, dude. Just... Franco-Scottish alliance early on. You'll need it. To, uh, I actually don't usually jump on the alliance bandwagon because it's usually it just doesn't benefit me for my immediate spouse. I usually do it for my kids. Yeah, I agree. Having more kids is usually kind of a pain in the ass. So let's look here. We have a lot of Amazonians to choose from, but we also do have the benefit of, like, look at this. She's intelligent, but she's craven, greedy, and gregarious. So I don't have to worry about much, much. Well, that's a good, oh, no, 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 no. 
That's a good option. Then we had another intelligent one. Oh, she's chased. All right, well, Willaberg's out. No, not necessarily, Yosef. I will invite people with uh, good traits, yes, Madra. Carolingian around my age, where? Let's jump back up. Let's do some of all skills. Okay, so this one's pretty solid. Juliana. She is gluttonous, though. Stubborn, and she's gregarious. She's content, which is great. Shy, which is never fun. And just. Swabian. Edie, how are you? Good to see you. I'm all for I'm all for Edith for obvious reasons. That was my grandma's name. Also good. Amazonian with just diligent and shy. Honestly, so we're definitely gonna go with Amazonian here. Let's go ahead and sort sort by that. Alien. So we got three strong options here. <laughs> It's my mom's middle name, too. And I think what we can go with here is... I mean, all three are really great ca candidates. Do you guys have any preferences? If not, I'll, if not, I would just choose, but I figured I'd, I'd give it to the people to decide. Frida might be the one I go with just because content. Deal with any kind of chicanery. Or maybe uh, Elodi. This one's a little character. What do you mean? Yeah, I'm liking Frida. Frida's looking pretty cool. Danilo, a shy one shouldn't matter. Get claims. Every every few months via fabricating one or invite people to, to my court. Voxel, I actually don't find that doing acting on someone else's claims is a good idea because they will get those claims. Um uh, fabricating them is probably one of the best, or getting a title that gives you access to them is probably the best. My character's got 11 learning too, Jake. The diligent trait is great, but again, I'm not playing her. It's just her trait. Yeah, a lot of you guys seem to want Frida. So Frida it is. And then lastly, let's take a look really quick at anyone else we can bring into our realm. Flesson, what's up, dude? Your family is doing well, brother. Have you gotten a chance to play 187? Or 188? 158? 158? You have to land them first, like in CK, or do you get their land added to your realm? They add to your realm, but they get the land. So, like, if I were to conquer Strathclyde because someone in my realm had a claim to it, it's part of my realm, but he gets the land. So, let's take a look in my realm, or no, 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 no. Diplomatic range, inside my range, all. And let's do unmarried adult. Not a ruler. Okay, well, look at this guy's helmet. That's pretty sweet. Now, what positions should we replace on the council and try to marry those positions to get them? Um, Gigram's, Gigram's good enough for Marshall, I'd say. 
But this guy is not, and he is on his way out. His heir, his heir's not going to care. His heir's content and humble. This guy's going to be a great vassal. So he can sit on it and dwell. Thanks, Surreal. Hey, Surreal. I gotta. I'm gonna be texting you later tonight, and I want those exclusive OnlyFans pictures to be sent to my exclusive OnlyFans uh, cell phone, and I want those exclusive OnlyFans textual sexual messages to come through as well. You saucy dog. Guys, go check out Surreal Beliefs. Check out his channel. Five dollar donation from the Big Daddy himself. And your beard looks well maintained. Funny because I was combing it today. I was like, my beard looks like crap. My beard was raggedy. I've got in my neck in a long time. It's all rough and tumble. Thank you, Rasp Fiel. Thank you, brother. Never has to have a good steward. Yeah, we're definitely doing a good steward right now. We've got to find one. And bring him to the court. I don't. I mean, this guy looks pretty solid. Zealous, gregarious, and diligent. Nothing wrong there. Do I even have the ability to arrange that marriage? I don't have anyone. Surreal. <laughs> Tell us with a two euro donation saying, yo, DM me Surreal's OnlyFans. Filter for loyal? That's a thing? So I guess I did the only marriage I could there. I yeah, will pin this guy. I, you know, I'm trying to use pins more often, so thank you for reminding me of that, Jake. I thought I had more... Well, I could invite her to the court. What does she cost? Oh, no, she's lustful. It's going to be an issue. Supposed to be something right here. Yeah, let's invite her to court. Then we'll use her to marry them. The cupbearer! I thought we had more people to do this with. Like... I thought I had more characters. God. Oh my god. Wolf. Like, I should be able to, to marry her to this guy. Yeah, Duke Bennett, let's get you married. That's weird. I mean, we just did this. I guess my filters are whack. I mean, not a ruler. I mean, do you guys see any reason why I shouldn't be able to do this marriage? Tax collector. He's already on a court. Okay. Okay, so we're married. Yeah, we unpause real quick. You get these marriages pulled through. There we go. Perfect. So we got a court position set up. Good, Anakin, good. I guess I'll nominate an heir here. My brother is, is the heir right now. That's not going to be the case. I'll just nominate my son. Donald! Let's jump back to this guy. Maybe we can do it now. No, what the hell? That's weird. I think it's because he's on the court, and I can't pull someone out of court like that. Go ahead and look back. Is 
that's the kind of that's the kind of negative side of the minor court thing is that hey, I see I don't think I can do it when when they're on a court position I can't seem to marry them off <laughs> this guy in my court Chancellor, so I don't think I can do that. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the the, the issue. Tax collector, steward. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, tell us. Uh, unfortunately, I can't seem to do that because they are currently on court or holding court positions. So I can't pull them away. I th I thought you could though. Look at that helmet. What's a zero out of eight? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some are set to non... Oh, I know. Boom. There it is, guys. All right, my bros. Yeah, do make sure you're liking the stream. As I always say, it helps me a ton. Well, Sarah is zealous, arrogant, and lazy. Look at that. Look at that. She looks, she looks insane. She looks... Absolutely nuts. It is lowborn. Garvis is important. Garvis. Yeah, that's the uh, community uh, flavor pack. Nice lowborn little guy. Huh? Huh? Oh, this is out. Thank you very much, Garrett. I appreciate that, man. David dropping in a $4 uh, Canadian with a huge cup of coffee. Thank you very much, dude. I'm not sure. Reefer. Mm, whoa. Different face. Yeah, well, that'll do it. Or be the big dog. Thank you for the donation. Billy, really, she's probably outside uh, sleeping. Yeah, if I get Gervais, he'll be named Ricky for sure. Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who? Male. Yeah, Guinness, we're doing a little uh, playthrough here of. I have to go with. One like that. Looks like I can't do it. Yeah, yeah, it slowed down, Colonel. <laughs> the unfortunate thing is, because of the minor titles, they all hold positions in court that are particularly prestigious. So they don't want them to be relinquished. But we're going to have to probably go down a lot more here. Someone at least like... Let me go to... Uh, 17, I guess. Ricardo. Gandalf. Fickle, honest, and callous. Steward. Steward. Courtier. Courtier. You're a courtier? You're just a courtier? I don't care that you're delicate. You're just a courtier. That's, that's great. Right, so he's a good option. The son of King Salmon. 
I'm not going to be able to pull him over, that's for sure. They have not announced a DLC, but they said some sub something is coming early this year. Okay, so he's just wandering. So this is this is awesome. So he's our now our new top candidate. Tax collector, tax collector, steward, wandering. Okay, good. Chaste, stubborn, and callous. Not the best. All right. Maybe we grab him. Damn. Well, so was this guy. Yeah, we're gonna have to go with that wanderer. If I had better standing with a lot of these dudes, it'd be easier. Like I get, I could get this guy if I had better standing with Ayla, but I don't. Where's Petty King Ayla? Northumbria. Well. That's not a bad. Still in turn one, James. We're just setting up our whole campaign here, so it's always a kind of a tedious situation. I mean, Northumbria could be a good... Yeah, sway on him for sure would be probably the best start. And then we probably can pull that off, so we'll do this. MP council position. Probably one of the minor titles. Let's go ahead and have her manage domains to help me out with money. Shouldn't be any empty council positions. Yeah, counselor? Not missing anyone. You're drunk. Go home. Declare wars. So we the nice thing too is we can declare war on anyone. I'm gonna go ahead and unpause now. Let this kind of take steps forward. Oh, wedding celebration. Okay. I'm gonna need money, so I'll take the money over here. Yeah, I think he's at war, isn't he? No, oh, he's not. But he's gonna lose some territory. There should be some wars going on. Oh yeah, they're at now they're at war. Rathclyde. I could try to Fulfid here. Yeah, we need more. We definitely need more uh, champions. We'll grab him. And Mercy is at war up here with uh, Jarl. Ivor the Boneless. Who are they in alliance with? There's no real point to me taking out Shetland. The Northern Isles. I guess the, the question is, who's our first real target here? Who are they allied with? Uh, Meath. Yeah, guys, do make sure you're liking the stream. Helps me a ton. Uh, I haven't, Requiem. Sorry, man. In general, I don't really watch many other content creators stuff and I think it's true of any other content creator we just don't watch sort of stuff because we're so busy making our own stuff cause some schemes in York and Mercia you know yeah we should actually be doing for that we should go look for some stuff here um maybe try to get a little alliance going here with Alfred
Um, let's go. Okay, foreign affairs is on. Good. Collect taxes is good. Organize. We'll do train commanders for now. Yeah, absolutely. I have no. I have no problem with anything. Legend said. I. <laughs> I saw his uh, like categorization of who is what by chaos god. That was really funny. I just don't. I unfortunately don't know what he said. I would honestly, I would like it for it to be Chaos Tours because of all of the stuff that we could potentially get in three, I am probably most excited for them because they just seem like they'd be so badass. Marry my son for Alliance. Good call, King Orc. Let's do that. And let's get... Who do we spy on, guys? Do we spy on Wessex, Mercia? So again, this is kind of cool, right? You get the Britonic Kingdoms right here, like we talked about. And these kind of little little broken up kingdoms. I really wanted to do a Welsh campaign just to be called a Pendragon, <laughs> but um, I'm very excited to do this one too. Wait, what's up, lesson? Okay. Well. Do you think it's going to be a two lords deal with the pre-order pack? I don't know. Is this guy a new guy? Mm. Mm. What's up, Alphix? Mercy it is. Warwickshire. Well, I don't go through the, the, the rounds, man. That's for sure. Okay, oh, let's get this going here. A little alliance. In serving as your steward, I've learned much about record keeping and finance. I'm willing to tutor you in these topics in order to gain your favor. I don't like weak hooks. In fact, I hate them. I can manage just fine on my own. I'll take the negative opinion. I'm sorry, but I just don't like weak favors. They can just really like have a huge wrench in your entire game through gameplay. Kingdom of Navarre. By Alliance Power. Ooh. Lothrongia. Um, Toulouse. Scott, what's up, Scott Shields? How are you doing? Uh, Kessel. Castle. Castle. Thorias. Cantabria. I mean, honestly, I think we kind of got to go with Lothongria. That's a huge, huge, huge. Comely, I mean, that, that brings Comely into the bloodline, too. I think that might be the, the good call here. He's two years younger than me. I, I think there's nothing wrong with that, right? Massive force by comparison to mine. Gives me a nice, good uh, buffer. Unfortunately, though, he is going to be pushed by Francia, Italy, and West Francia, and he's going to call me for aid. So I'm not too sure. Uh, there's Upland. Just Bjorn and Ironside. West Francia doesn't seem to have anyone. Oh my god. I see that you've betrothed this very tiny young woman to a very old man. Yeah, they won't you yeah, the religion usually kind of bars that. Good call. Consultator? Conciliator, whoops. East Francia. 
Got nothing. Got no. Well, whoa. We could do that. That gives us the Kingdom of Italy. But that's so far away. Yeah, West Frankie has got no daughters that are not married. Because remember, this is my this is my currently my player heir. So I do also want to set it up so that um Call me Jimmy, we're gonna get there, man. Don't you worry, bro. Asturias, but he has no kids. Navarre does. Infanta Jimene Gar Gartiez. You're right, they won't accept it. Good call. <laughs> yeah, this is the only good option for a for a big alliance. Um Wessex maybe, nothing. Cornwall. Gwynedd. Gwynedd. I don't know how to pronounce any Welsh names or words. It is Irish. Uh, Norse is going to be hard because I am... See, like, if I... Let's say... Does y'all have... Do you have any kids? It's, if I did any of these, I have to deal with a 1,000 different faith penalty. I do like Asturias. Asturias is a good option. And I could use Cantabria because Cantabria has got some kids I could do. That, sound, that sounded terrible. Brittany just has a uh, older man. There's not really any good candidates. Outside of the many princesses of North Hungria. What's up, excessive? Tuscany, Toulouse, Nordau. I don't even know where this is. That's way over there. Country under Brittany? Oh, Montague? But he's Norse. And uh, Heston is a badass. I wanted to do Heston. Tabria again is another good one. Similar armies at 700. He is on death's bed. <laughs> Man, this, this, guys, we barely, we're barely anything into this campaign right now. And we're an hour and a half into stream. That could actually be pretty cool, Tushar. Well, I can't do that through this menu, right? Good call, King Orc. Kind of. It seems complex, but I promise it's really not. Flanders. Let me take a look at this. Yeah, these are the only three like alliances that bring inheritable traits into the bloodline too. Bone juice out of the game. 
Flanders for the meme. <laughs> Yeah, it's up. up uh, what do you guys think? It's either Bertha and get pulled into Lothangria's wars, or wait. Yeah, Rasp. That's kind of why I'm not crazy. What did I have a missed call from? Bertha for the challenge, a lot of people saying wait. Yeah, Lothungra gets their shit kicked in. Well, I guess we could wait a little bit. We just have no alliances, which is kind of crappy. But I don't think that that's a good alliance because they're going to be at war so fast that they'll never be able to send aid to us. They're good and close though, you know, that's a pretty close distance. I just think that if I go that route, I'm pigeonholing myself and I'm I'm going to have more kids. She's 22 in Amazonian, she's just going to be popping them out. He's going to be going hot and heavy down on uh, these two down here. I'll let him just kind of burn out on that. Crocodile Dundee over here. Midas Reborn. Isn't that awesome? And now he's married. Wait, did I do the other? Didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't I set up? Wait a minute. Didn't I set up a marriage? To get a courtier. Thought we set up a steward marriage. Peter? No, Peter is the Peter is the uh he's our court physician. What's going on here? What's up, I see me. How are you doing? Severus own marriage? What, do you, what does this mean? I'm playing standing up. I always stand up. What the hell? Who are you then, dude? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. And unfortunately, we did that sway to try and get this guy, but he's now married, so... That's what's not going to help. There, that'll do.
So this? Westria? No, no one no one in New Westria, unfortunately. My brother's messaging me real quick. And because we are still in the state of a international pandemic, I always respond to my family. One sec, guys. Sorry about this. What's up, Douglas? Thanks, Barry. <laughs> the bro my brothers who made the uh, the music. So if you like the music in the beginning, it was my brother's music. So that's just going to go a little bit now. Let that do its thing. What's up, General Doomer? Push a little bit further forward. A lot of raiding and pillaging going on over here. Yeah, we can go do some raiding here. Um, do we get anything cool as Gaelic? Unfortunately not. Reading the Vikings based. <laughs> okay, um Who do we raid? Who do we try to get into our We don't have a ton of soldiers. We only have a thousand. Most things around us Oh man, look at North under Northumbria's gonna get just tanked. We kinda knew this would happen. Um I'm not gonna go raid them. I can't well this is considered a land bridge, so I can raid this. I don't think there's anything worth raining on, though. Like, we're 12. I can't go into boats, which is very important to note. Um, 6, 4, 4, 7, 9. You can jump into the Island of Man for 15, which is kind of cool. You can jump down into Ireland for 15 here. The nice thing about Ireland, too, is it's all individual locations. So it's I can just pop to each one. And we can do that. Where should we raid, guys? I'm going to pee real quick and let me know in chat where we raid.
Oh, I thought a man is boneless? Okay. Great Ireland? I kind of think Ireland's a good target. Do you get a penalty for raiding other Christian states? Actually, I don't know, Avalation. Never played a Christian tribe either. This will be my first time, so it'll be fun. Let's have fun together. We should probably buy some men at arms too. We'll get some footmen. What is throughout here? Jungle, taiga, and forest. Okay, so we have hills, plains, marsh, or wetlands. Wetlands, wetlands, plains. A lot of wetlands and hills and wetlands. I don't think anything gets a bonus in wetlands, to be honest. I think all of it gets... If it has a bonus, it gets a negative. I love prestige-based men-at-arms. <laughs> so great. Well, let's go ahead and do one order of bowmen. And one order of order. order. What the hell's wrong with me? Maybe we do two. Do we do... Do we do uh, another rank of uh, archers? Or you guys want to do some footmen? See, I liked armor. I like armored footmen because they just they're flat. There's no terrain effects on them, which is really solid. But they counter spearmen, which the early game really, really goes with. That the early game always tries to bring light footmen to the table. Well, I'm sorry, pikemen, I suppose. Oh, we're gonna hit that temple, all right. You never really have to kick her, it gets evaded or not. Whatever the AI likes to prioritize it in wars. Alan is going to take over first because you never really have it, have to care, take care of it if it gets invaded or not for whatever reason the AI likes to prioritize it. Um, light footman. Light footman. Yeah, a lot of light footmen around the around the whole entire globe here. Light footmen, bowmen. Let's do one. Let's do one more stack of them. And we'll squeeze in just one unit of light footmen. North Seas Venice. That's a kind of an interesting idea, Homer. What are you doing, dude? You're not going to like when I summon up an army to just come and punch you in the head. Alright, Haldir. So, go ahead and rally point here. I don't want them to just jump on it, so we'll rally point here. Even though it's the same distance, at least there's a defensive structure. Raise all raiders here. Still 50-50, huh? Battle at Falkirk, how cool is that? Come join us, you 626 men. Yeah, cool. They're jumping in. I'll kind of mitigate some of our losses here. Constantine, what's up? Wounded burger. Champion has arrived, huh? He's a champion. I don't know. Well, Proven to the court.
Yeah, they did fix the quality bug, I believe. Okay, that should bring everyone. Yeah, good enough. Enough champions, I suppose. If you raid the raiders, are you the raiding or the raider? Now, I don't like... How much... Like, the strong presence they've got there. Kind of scary, actually. But we should be okay to just kind of now keep moving. Let's go just right to here. And I turned off auto rating so we don't accidentally raid anywhere we don't want to raid. Okay. Oh, you know what we should be doing though? Development here is two versus ours is four. Okay, never mind. Let's go here and, and sack this guy. Recently raided. We can kill him. He's carrying a bunch of money. Oh, he's not. Loot, loot. Guess we'll go up here and party chop this army, I suppose. Six and three. That is also the... Don't want to go down there. <laughs> Six and fifteen, and we'll go here for sure. He made it back into those lands, so he was able to shut down my raid. That guy to the court. This guy's. A, this guy could be a good potential vassal too. Okay, good. Oh man, Meath grew already, huh? Okay, so we actually have to get out of this. We want to get right into here at least, because if I fight them here, they will get the benefit of being in wetlands, and that's going to hurt me. See, how do you stop raiding? Q. See, the problem is he's raiding. I don't want him to do that. <laughs> I actually clicked there to see something. Well, if he attacks me, it's not going to be too great.
Well, I guess we're going to have to do this. Uh, I thought we could get out of here, but we can't. Oh, okay. He's actually moving. Oh, no, he's not. Well, see if we can do this. Should be fine. Ooh. A victory! Oh. After this, we'll have to go back because we're already losing plenty of men here. Okay, let's go back. Our lands. What's up, Smiley? I shut off raiding so we don't accidentally raid again. Uh oh, what happened here? Well, no fact that the court here will scheme and plot. I may be able to use this to my advantage. If I can keep my courtiers suspicions of each other, if I can keep my courtiers suspicious of each other and distracted with, with infighting, they will not have the time and resources to scheme against me. Okay. Begin spreading rumors at once. Oh, ho, ho, ho. As long as, as long as I, as long as I play spies among them, I will be safe. Court spies. Scheme resistance is eight. That's kind of nice. But this gives me intrigue, which is also nice. Um, because of this, though, my scheme resistance is pretty nice. I thought scheme success chance thirteen percent. But it shows you that your scheme success chance is pretty good. Um, we'll go with some uh, intrigue. Cause my courtiers to distrust each other. Oh ho ho ho. Causes intrigue in this crazy court of Scotland. Oh, unpause. Keep moving. Greetings, my sense will lead despite our efforts. I have not yet uncovered any series of Petty King Burgred's court. Yeah, I'm right here, right? Oh, that's Ayla. Um. Continue to find some secrets, man. Hang sandwich. Okay, so we got some good raiding done there. We're going to disband these, this army for a little bit, let it all come back to strength. Also, it's going to bring our uh, men-at-arms back up as well. That's a good little uh, good little foray right there. How's this war going? He's losing this horribly to Ivar. Ivar is losing this one. Tons of Lodbrook invasion of... So, Lothbrook invasions of East Anglia. Yeah, they're getting beat back pretty hard. It's actually just him. The other ones have jumped out on it, it looks like. Half down white shirt. The North Sea Empire, any of you got? No, I've never even, I don't even know what that is. So it's going to be interesting. I think we have to take Strathclyde and put them at least into. I mean, I could try to offer vassalage, and what does he want? We're a different culture group. That's going to be annoying. So I think we work on building our relationship with him. I think Ayla is kind of a lost cause, unfortunately. Dude, look at the schemester that he is, though. Whoa! I think if I go to war with Ivar, it'll be really, really punishing. Can't even murder him, man. Ooh! I can murder him. Do we murder Ivar the Boneless, guys? Let's do it. We'll start that scheme. And how about we do this? We do a sway scheme here. 
Emperor Palpatine, what do you think? Do it! Um... Let's do a sway scheme here, because he's actually not that far off from taking, from just accepting vassalage. Mm. Excuse me. Ooh, that's too, that's, that's too hefty of a gift. Okay, this could be good. Get a mutual alliance going with him? Wait. Can you offer... You can't offer vassal vassalage to an alliance, can you? He'll die before I sway him? I don't think so. He's fine. Yeah, it would be mainly, Talos would be mainly just to kind of curb any attacks on us. He's 64 in the Dark Ages, bro. <laughs> hey, but he's fine. It says he's fine. It says he's, he says he's kind of okay. <laughs> I'm good, Hugh. How are you, dude? You take care as well, man. Stay safe out there, dude. Mormor Comgol. Name. That's cool that we'll be able to assassinate Ivar the Boneless. Tidbits far away. Visiting the local market, a merchant from a faraway land catches my attention. Come closer, my lord. Marvel at treasure never before seen in these lands. Walked right past the guards responsible for these beauties. A true knower of people that I am. This merchant might have more to give me than marvels from afar. It must be interesting to travel as much as you do. Diplomacy challenge. Learn to read people. He will tell me what he knows. Learning to read people. Uh, 30% chance of threatened merchants. Oopsies. This should cover both trinket and information. Hmm. Uh, the legendary people, Ross, typically are very have very inflated uh, stats. Like if I were to go over here and click, I mean, look at King Rurik, Rurikid. He's got really sweet stats. Mostly of like the big legendary people tend to have really nice. Stat lines. Um, the Bulgaria one is gonna have a pretty good stance. Yeah, I mean King Boris of Bulgaria, Byzantine Empire was not necessarily awesome at the time, so nothing crazy here. I think Abbasids maybe. Hey, oh man, my ear. Okay. Um. This go to. Ooh, her court politics are terrible. <clears throat> Let's put a little dread, I think. A little dread. Let's get a little dread going here. 30% chance of failure. Peasants are angered by your behavior. Uh-oh. <laughs> Whoops. I mean, we're about to kill someone, so I figured dread would be kind of fun, but... Alfred of Wessex has some pretty bomb stats. It's insane, his stats, actually. I mean, he has to deal with a lot. He inherits his kingdom like two days into the into your campaign. Yeah, 
And he's about to grab this, so we'll let this kind of progress further. Again, we have to have our, our armies come back to strength too, so. Okay, just switch to disrupt schemes. You can't seem to do anything useful. What's up, Lady Killer? How are you? Support the schemes, actually. We'll have you support scheme. That'll help this out. I can invite some more people here. Uh, acceptance, isn't it? Team power? Oh, no, it's just 60. Okay, whatever. Oh, I can do his own wife to help me out for 18 gold. I don't need to do it. We're already at 95 and 95, but I like this uh, role play. So, yeah, invite her to join. Sigtrig, his son. Oh, can't do it. Gained 50, nice. She's joined the scheme. Five more months and hopefully we can do it. Uh, invite his successor while he's still at war. I can't, unfortunately. This is his son. What is his son? Buried. I thought this is a success chance. Why can't I? Acceptance? Hmm. Yeah, his son won't. His son won't do it. Master of the ships. What's up, Abd? Abdi? Agent, move from screen. Oh! What? Does that affect me? How does that affect me? No. Fine. Honest longer an agent. Okay, we need to get more agents here. I don't like that. This must go through. Up, Chris Pilk. Ooh, intrigue trade here, huh? The truth is relative, so we can fabricate. I think we're gonna go here. This might be the best one to go with. Uh, Schemer is so strong. Dark insights, though, when you torture someone, fifty percent chance to gain one intrigue or one prowess. Dread gain, enticing, and seduction schemes. There, fertility, always great. I actually, you know, surprised I haven't had a kid yet. We'll go truth is relative. Because being able to fabricate books is so good. Wait a minute. I thought I was chased. I was like, no! Try for a fertility? Oh. Um, we'll definitely work on my wife, though, next. Because we need to get her loving on me. Commander promoted. My marshal, good groom... Has been showing off a promising new recruit. Yeah. Yeah. He can come aboard. Welcome to the court, dude. You might have just gotten yourself a position on the council, even. Ivar is 49. About to be 40 dead. Coming, it's coming. Here it is. I'll cost my agents have a, have a scheduled journey for Jarl Ivar, which will take them through dark woods. All that is missing is the band of thugs that will tragically slay them in a highway robbery gone wrong. I can already imagine blood seeping into the dark soil. Okay, so 5% chance this fails. It's time, guys. Let's see if we can kill Jarl Ivar the Boneless. Thugs did their job. Jarl is no more. Ho! Boom, boom, boom! As the travel party stopped the camp for the evening, bandits poured out from among the trees, calling for blood and gold. The soldiers fought back, but thankfully it was not enough. 
Jarl Ivar was tragically slain in the melee. Conveniently, most of the bandits were slain in the fighting, and the dead do not speak. No one will ever know of my involvement. Ah, perhaps commoners are not so useless after all. So let's just see what that did. Whoa, that curbed his army by like a grand. And now his son takes the throne here. Excuse me. Gotta feed my pawns having ten alpacas has a was a bad idea. <laughs> Lol Rimworld problems. <laughs> well thanks for jumping in, Lady Killer. Good to see you. Dude, we just took out Ivar the Boneless. Just annihilated that staple of strength. Bebemba? 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 I am Utrid, son of Utrid. Make the square and we shall fight. Oh, we'll raid. I'll club? No, I don't want to do that. Let's get some more men at arms, too. I'm actually going to get. I want some armored footmen. I'm gonna do it. Do it. And I'm gonna do one more thing of archers because I always find myself wanting to do this at some point, and I think now is a good time. We're swaying uh, this. We're swaying this guy. Yeah, the primary heir is Jarl Sigrob. Oh, we're going to get into Northumbria. Don't you worry, man. So, our first... That's our first goal, is uniting the King of Alba. Like, entirely. All the de Ure lands. De Ure lands. Okay, so we did not actually sway him. So, I'm going to stop that. I'm going to try and befriend my wife. Oh, I can't be for my wife. I need you need the actual perk. I forgot. Sway. How's Lothungria doing? I mean, it seems to be doing just fine, to be honest now. I could still do this. Yeah, Vesper, how do you feel? But yeah, I don't really want to... I think getting pulled into Lothangria is going to be dangerous, so I, I want to stay away from it. But that is an option. What's up, Von Karstein? How are you doing, man? Meng Ram, what's up, dude? Are you relative to Coyote Peterson? What? <laughs> House of Piast. Poland doing. I don't, really, I don't really know. I know this. I know I'm not clicking it. Oh, there it is. Greater Poland, duh. Seem to be okay. For now. Look at that new fancy haircut he's got. Good. Okay, maybe we fabricate a claim? Or a hook, I mean, sorry. I could fabricate a hook over here and then offer vassalage. No, that's alliance. I can offer that for alliance. Um... This war is just about one, though, and I'm wondering... Invasion of Lothian. So, I don't know what land he's going to take. I think the blue? I know, Zen. I was just clicking around. 
Let's see how this shakes out. Okay, so that's what happened. And that's good. That's good. And that concludes their war, so they lose those special troops, right? Uh, yeah, Oli, there will be. I didn't realize it was pink. <laughs> because why that's good is this. That's in my kingdom. So I have a claim to it already. Is that a duchy? Yeah, and I can even just do a, I can do a war on that. Onto the battler. Word, true word only. Maybe we do that. Oh yeah, we'll negotiate this alliance so he can't get spicy with me. Oh, oh, my brain, my brain. Ooh, that hurt. We can do invasions, which is nice. Of course, Zen, of course. Going on a pilgrimage isn't a bad call. Probably turning Scots, yeah, but I I don't I don't even know if there's a decision to create that culture. Is there? I mean, the the, the culture does not exist on the map. Uh, I don't think there's a culture for it. Oh, there is. West Germanic, Scots, Spain, Provost. But how do you create Scots? Anglo-Saxon, culture splits, Anglo-Saxon and Scots, always conditioned. Oh, so Ivar creates it. Yeah, because that's where we talked about this, right? This is where the Scots are. We're swaying my wife. He's got it, so. The picks already exist. Yeah, so I can't create it, it looks like. Emerging cultures, Sicilian. The following cultures will divide into multiple small cultures when certain time periods are reached. A player character will get the option to cancel the culture split if it controls 80% of the counties with the original culture. The original culture of Anglo-Saxon in Scotland will branch into Scots. It always happens, it looks like. So I think that they're saying this will create this region anytime from 850 to 950 will create Scots.
Yeah, I think so too, Chris. Yeah, Ayla died. Ayla died in that. I don't know if he died. Was executed by the way of the Blood Eagle by Jarl Barid Iverson. Wow, man. Look at that. The, the King of Intrigue is gone. And now, Petty Queen Blea. Nail that pronunciation, I'd like to think. Okay, so, let's make a decision here then. We can go back to raiding, and I can go raid into Northumbria, but Northumbria is pretty beat up, and they're losing this war here to uh, the Sons of Lodbrok. Okay, so they're going to lose it to, to Jorvik. And Northumbria will only be consistent of that, probably, is what it looks like. Let me look at this. I think they'll actually dug it completely consumed. Northumbria is going to fall. Thank you, Duke. I appreciate that. I, I have not seen your comment yet. But I shall in time, my bro. Uh, what is this? Oh, that's just getting siege right now, huh? Oh, no. 17. 20. And 14. So I might be able to get some raiding in before this, this war concludes. Which could be pretty hot and spicy. I usually heart all of them. Then I go through and read them and respond. <laughs> Greetings from Argentina. Hello, Seti. How are you? 69. Nice. Okay, so uh, I don't hear any dissenting voices, so we shall do that. Travel to Northumbria and try and get... Yeah, we got the big 111! up helix try and just raid these in the meantime i mean this this is going to be consumed by Jorvik. thank you aquistian i'm doing well dude i hope you're doing well as well as i hope you are doing well as well i'm gonna uncheck always raid johnny super psyched Not to be confused with Soprasada. Right, so we've got that going. Let's jump down to... Oh, wow, they just took that, so that crapped out on me. Well, we can still raid stuff, it looks like. Lots of stuff to raid. We just don't want to raid it when it becomes their territory. Well, I mean, we still could. It won't matter. Oh, God. Sway, the Swabian culture. A commoner of Swabian heritage has been accosted in the streets of St. Johnston over some minor offense. By making a statement in their defense, I could perhaps convince my wife, Queen Frida, the equally Swabian of my good character, but I might risk alienating my Gaelic peers. Uh, They're good people. Love me. Like all my other past relationships. Yeah, sure. I'll convert. <laughs> well, this should... That just backfired, so we will pivot. Um, Johnny, I'm between Chaos Dwarfs and Ogre Kingdoms. Both make a lot of sense, and we covered it in that uh, big video. On the subject that I did. Can you invest in like cultural art, like architecture? Well, kind of. You invest in stuff like this. Right now we're doing uh, Banus, which I know is not even. Okay, um, get over here, see what we can raid. 
A lot of stuff has been raided, which is the unfortunate thing. But we can still raid Dun 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 McGonagall, Dun McGonagall, Professor McGonagall. I could just raid this area. I don't know why I'm not doing that. It's got a huge army. That's why. Good lord. We might have to pay for this because I don't want them to get in a war. Like, because all this needs to do is he just needs to fight them and, and eat this territory. I mean, all this land has all been raided, so I think I gotta just actually back off. And I don't wanna raid this land. And if I start raiding this, just this massive doom stack is gonna punch into my balls. Like it always does. I think we just jump back here. Get a giant Scottish air with red hair. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna save this. And we'll try to see if we can get kind of little diddy 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 didn't diddy, diddy dum dum going. Thirty two won't be enough. I just murder him. No, I'm, I'm kind of only half kidding. Wait, what are you saying? Then try to invade for your claim. See if that will give you it at all. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so offer vassalage. Need 57, and this is going to give me... We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. No, no, no. I'll buy it, see if we can do this. 30. Oh, it's still really low. You're a different cultural group. Base reluctance. Yeah. It should though, Talos. It should definitely have it allow it happen. Because the opinion of me gives me ten. Switch wife to intrigue? I'm not sure how that would help. She really is not gonna give me any benefit. let them just kind of Ooh, Mercia just got him. Just captured him. 100%. So what are they uh wow, yeah. I wish I was wearing a kilt. I just have cool pinkish purplish Lewis shit going on. Lost against Petty King Edmund of East Anglia. The Sons of Labrick invasion of East Anglia. So that was put to an end. 
they no longer have any wars and they just lost even more troops so their their power is getting curbed which is good our power is building their power is building so if he were to attack strathclyde um i think we do this let's negotiate an alliance because then if he attacks him i can at least help out Actually, I'm going to save to see if this affects anything. Because if we have an alliance with them... Seals kissed by a rose just started blaring in the background. That would. I don't want that. Oh, yeah. Offering a ward, not a guardianship. I always forget the difference here. <laughs> Alright, let me. pee again, real quick, because I've been drinking a ton of liquid today. We'll go ahead and actually, we'll, I got to refill this too. So let me know, guys, what should we do? I, I think working on trying to get this vassalage done is going to be huge. We're swaying right now our wife because we do want to have some kids. Um, I can go take this thing out. I, I mean, it, it doesn't have an alliance that is really worth anything, but I can just go grab it. It's just land to have and conquer um, for no reason other than why not. And it's connected to me, so at least it's just another piece of land. So maybe that's what we do, just to kind of do something to expand our border a little bit this episode. Uh, but I do think working on this is going to be huge. And at least we're in an alliance, so if they attack them, we can help at least. So give me one sec, going to get some more water, but let me know.
All right, back. Just got my massive shipment of a bunch of vitamins. I bought vitamin D3, more vitamin C, more zinc, and baby aspirin. My uh, my mom volunteers at a hospital and they said, hey, if you get COVID, take a regimen of these daily until you're negative. So I don't want to get it, but in case I do, I have a fallback. Fallback, I have a treatment regimen, a vitamin regimen, I guess. Paris, what's up, man? Bordu Kali, what's up, man? <laughs> I should be Paris. I should be, dude. You're back, but my, you're back, but my ride to get food is here. All right, well, Alpos, go have fun, dude. Get some food. So let's just go pop up in this BZ up here. Do some whomping and a stomping. Up at Kate Ness. One bottle of scotch a day will keep coming away. <sighs> this should be easy enough to take, so let's go do it. Okay, um... And we will conquer this county. Well, they actually have a pretty sizable... Oh, they have allies. That's what... What? Can't do it. Can't even host a feast or anything like that. We'll wait a little bit longer. We'll be able to very soon. There we go. Now we can. So we will do this, do this. Oh, have they expanded up there too? Interesting. Oh no, two different flags. McDonald's? I love. Oh, <laughs> I like McDonald's. We haven't gotten there yet though, Paris. Got him. Ooh. That was a significant roll in their favor. So they're going to go right for my capital. That's fine. We'll just take the war target. Seven months to do this siege, dude. Alright. While his numerous attempts to curry my favor have not gone unnoticed, I cannot feel but irritated by Mormer's sudden interest in me, and I cannot shake the feeling that the man's intentions are not pure. And I don't he does not like me. He still has a certain charm. <laughs> I never want to see his face again. He's a bold zealot. He doesn't really have any intrigue, though. 
So it's not like he's spicing it up over here. One of my stronger vassals, I suppose. Um, yeah, Valheim looks really good. It looks really cool. But I mean, if we're friends, he can't do a murder plot on me. So I guess I'll just do it. He's just kind of a terrible vassal. Is his son going to be any better? How old is he again? 55. His son's barely going to be better than him. Ugh. Mm. We'll do it. He'll perform better if he's if he likes me more. Okay, so this army down here, they're going to link up. Where's that other army? It's still way up here. That's a larger force. So I might want to go down here and smash this army out. It's not going to be able to siege anything. Oh, it might it might be able to siege this, actually. And that's where he's going to go. <clears throat> but I think crushing those armies is pretty crucial. But also doing this is pretty huge, too. So let's, um, let's just kind of let this go a little bit further. Yeah, that's a big army. We gotta go down there. And it's only gonna get stronger. Whew! Aha! I got one of them! You can change the culture of a capital, yeah. You have to just change the location of your capital first. And got that again. Good. That just kind of weakens them, punches them up a little bit. Let's go back here and try and take this now. Rise of the Scots. There it is. Though they share common origins with other Anglo-Saxons, the clans living in northern Britain's lowlands have adopted to life in the rugged terrain. Diverging culturally and linguistically from their former countrymen, these Scots have enthusiastically embraced their new culture. So let's see here. So yeah, here's the Scots. Actually, it's a better culture than ours. So maybe we could switch to the, squat, the Scots. Secret exposed. Simple truth has been reached in the light of my day. My brother, my brother, High Chief, now has, has copulated with his lover, Nathad. I guess I could take the level of devotion. I, I could just imprison them, then immediately release them, though, right? I just don't want to dampen that opinion. Here you go. Oops, wrong one. 30. So I could basically... I could imprison him and then release him. 
Rabby Bruce's dad. <laughs> Rabby the Bruce. Wait, hint of care. How lovely. I don't know, what do, you, what do you guys think? Do we we do we imprison him and then release him? I mean, I'm going to lose a level of devotion if I just straight up release them. And my faith's not particularly high. I could do this first and then do it. He'll at least give me money. Yeah, might as well. Or I could use that for Holy Wars. That's right, I forgot about that. We can't, we can probably get a ton of Holy Wars go. Imprison him, then ransom him? Yeah, I guess so. That's kind of... Active election, you can call dynasty members. To war. Okay. Nope! Oh. Put them in prison. Oh, she's carrying a child. Oof. None of these are even worth ransoming. They're all worth killing, though. That's what he. Ooh, Sturker here could be a good champion. Or actually, he, not a good champion, but a good marshal. This guy be a good champion, though. He's melancholic. What are you? Are you just anything? No, you will probably get killed. We'll complete our war, then we'll decide what to do with that. They're just hemorrhaging troops. Oh, I see. I didn't know. I already did it, Talos. I'm sorry, bro. Got him. Aha! So Alcult is dead. Alcult. Not for Vassalage. Okay, so he's close. Okay, so. Ah! The queen is pregnant. It's a baby. Here's square pregnant with a baby. Don't do what I think you're gonna do, man. You jerk. Whoa, what the hell happened here? It's come to my attention, my lord, that you might be in need of someone of my... talents. My new acquaintance, Sionade, approaches me, smiling. If my services could be of use to you, please do not hesitate to request them. Okay, so what is she? Ooh. Ooh. She's deceitful, though, and I... deceitful scary. I mean, if she's if she's on my court and she's deceitful, it's not too bad. But I, it's usually kind of. I mean, do we do it for the fun? <laughs> she's got such an amazing amount of uh, intrigue, though. The deceitful thing is so worrisome. Well, it's because of the mod I've got. Do it for the fun. We'll do it for the fun. Yeah, there we go. There, there go her clothes. Just like Ferengi society. Women don't wear clothes. 
I love this new the new uh, combat like screen and system. It's just so much better. Can I, I? I don't have any ability to make monitors. Four hundred and eighty years, forty nine. Yeah. I, what do the Scots get? The Scots have onagers, man. Maybe we convert to Scott culture. I think that'd be kind of cool, right? Where is Schoon? I know at this point it's just like a little... I thought Schoon was like around here. Dunklid. And Johnston. You make the square. Make the square and we will fight. Dude, and, this, and the Scots get... What's it called, too? That's really huge, man. Onagers. I offer Madru my sincere thanks as she stares angrily... Oh, Jesus. Through my haze of alchemy. It was not easy to find someone to volunteer to test my collection of substances... For her, it has been an evening of pain, burning sensations, and occasional consciousness. Uh, this has been most insightful. Uh, I don't think we're that level of sadistic. Oh, Scoon's on the west coast? Girls, to show you what I know. West Coast under the islands. That maybe it's already part of this. Um, because I don't want too many kids, Chris. We're tribal, remember? So it's going to be kind of a pain to kind of get that under wraps. Alright, we just gotta jump into it. Ah, our champion Prothod killed Ulfir. I have, I have no idea after an ancestor, after a good Catholic name or a good Gaelic name, Gaelic, I suppose. Oh, Orgy. Oh, I like that. Sen failed. I don't know how to pronounce it. Then Falad. Oh, that one, Mathair, Mathier, Mathier, Matasaurus Rex, Mathair, Luke, <laughs> Regan, Dime, yeah, I'll go with that one. I like that one. Did you get anything? Hey, he's robust. So that's going to take seven months. What's this going to take? Five months? Oh, all right. Got to jump back down south. A dark night can truly make the shadows in my castle's hallways come alive. The perceived risk of unsanctioned visitors... Rise ever higher for every unguarded corner spotted. If I alone can see this many faults, imagine what more people with a similar perspective could do. Yeah, Eddie, uh, Edie, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. So I think we smash this army out, go siege, split the army, and then go down. My perspective alone is enough. All right, we completely crushed those armies, which is good. That's getting us a lot of in or uh, uh, what's it called, which is nice. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to build defensive stuff because as we get into some more spicier uh, conflicts, and we have a lot of prisoners too. So let's get this. Let's go. Dark. Execution, murder scheme, power. 
disrupt scheme effectiveness, find secrets, progress speed. Uh, find secrets or enticing. All right, Richard, thanks for jumping in, man. Have a good evening, my dude. This guy, already just coming to be a jerk. Do I have any of the Steam achievements? I've got a, quite a few, yeah. Court of Shadows, and be prepared. Yeah, these two are really solid. Let's go Cordo. Actually, uh, let's go digging for dirt. Try to get a kidnapper. That'll be next, uh, Rocket. <laughs> yeah, if you need any help, Tyler, let me know, man. I'm happy to help you out. Okay, she was swayed. What is her opinion of me? Okay, so we can stop that sway scheme. This is this is good enough. Let's sway this. Let's go to Negotiate Alliance. Angus! What's up, noob? We're coming around to the end here, I think. Yeah, we're just about at the end of our stream here today. I just want to conclude this war, get it knocked out. All right. We have concluded our war. Let's go ahead. Oh, and I have a valuable hostage. The actual ruler of the kingdom. We'll go crush this army just to get some more fame. I've noticed your interest in the arts of subterfuge, my lord. I might be able to help you to learn even more. Even more. Even more. Even more. Even more. My guest, again, again, her. She becomes my mentor. Uh, I don't. That. I've never done the mentor thing. Is that like, does this person have the potential to actually hurt you? Me too, Paris. What's my brother doing here? We can make her my spy master. It's just that it would replace someone else in my court. Um, let's try it. Let's try it. She's deceitful and she's a content adventurer. So I think it'll be fun to try this out. I've never done something like this. Tourney troubles. As king, I have been obliged to attend a local wrestling tournament. The contestants have been delayed. The tourney won't start for at least another hour. Looking around, I notice High Almoner Morimer sitting under a nearby pavilion, clearly bored halfway to death. Ooh, getting the trade drunkard. Do not want that one. And some time under the pavilion. So he'll become my friend. Yeah. Make him my friend. 
The Sith rule of two. Yes, do it. And that just gives us another quick little victory to close out this war here. So let's conclude our stream by dealing with all of our prisoners. We have tons to go off of. We have this dude who, I mean, we're not going to ransom him because he is, uh, you know, the guy. But we can, let's get as much money from him as we can. I've got his heir. So be it. Jedi. Enemy war leader captured. So it doesn't matter if we release the heir or anything like that. So we can ransom her. And I could bring her into my into my bed. I mean what? That's the heir's child. <laughs> I got that. I got that joke. Um, Tyler, it's kind of interesting. Because you can I can see that you could really struggle with this. Is he worth anything? Well, he's actually a pretty... See, there's a lot of these guys with really good learning, but I can't do anything with them because my core position is a beast. Peter. Oh, I don't want him to be a champion anymore. Forbid him from being a champion. He's married and everything, so, I mean, he's just good. Is there a minor title that requires that? Yeah, I can make him the High Almoner. Interesting. Cup bear is pretty sweet. Oh, we'll sign this guy to this for sure. We gotta get him like a really cool like Herculean wife too. Was that feckin' one, right? Like the feckin' Herculean one and just like popping them out? <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going to do Scots. 100% we're going to convert to Scots. Not gonna do anything with him. Um, he's already been released. Philip here. I mean, I could convert him. I mean, 16 is pretty decent. Uh, Sigbjorn here. Got some pretty good marshal, but he's lustful, so he's just gonna be boning my whole my whole court. Reefer is going to be executed. Oh, he just gains dread. He 
could be worth it. And he's got some good... Yeah, this guy could be worth it. Yeah, we'll do that. Stroker. Again, I think he... And he'd make a good vassal, too. So we'll recruit this guy. Alfier here could be a good champion. Kind of like that narrative too. Valky would just be a good. He'd be a really good, just generic. Uh, um, excuse me. Actually, here's what I'm gonna do. He'd be just, he'd be a solid, yeah, we're going to recruit him too. He's just a good uh, um, vassal. He's just kind of a generic guy. Let that all go through real quick. All right, I'm Laurie. But all these kind of push in. This guy I just don't really see much use in. And I could execute the people just to kind of get a little, uh... Make some money off of this. Tyler, it just has to do with how they would how they weigh decisions against you. It really doesn't do much for you. So I'm gonna actually burn him at the stake. I'm gonna just kill these uh, these uh, these peeps. Maybe Bjorn's actually kind of good, but I just don't want him to go running wild in my territory over here. Correct. Yes, that's what I'm saying. All right. I'll hold on to him for a bit, and we will end our war. I can only, like... Uh-oh. Prisoner in my own body. I know I was pushing. I should have just listened to what my body was telling me, but I chose to ignore it. I'll finish this before going to bed. Just a couple more, then I'll rest. Suddenly I felt lightheaded, and as I got up, my vision went black. The next day I woke in bed, unable to get up as my body refuses to listen to me. Perhaps God decided to punish me for not treating this vessel meant to... Ooh, what is this? Infirm? Oh, that's not good. Oh! Can I lose this? Feel I can do not to wait await death's sweet embrace to claim me. Am I gonna lose this character? I'm not gonna allow that. I'm not gonna allow it. I'm pfft, I'll go to an auto save. I don't like that. That's terrible. So he gets this forever, he can't lose this trait. Well, guess what you are, little buddy. You might, I might have to go Marshall focus on him.
He's a martial focus. I think the boy's got to be martial too, though. All right, excessive. Have a good one, man. That's brutal, dude. We'll go Marshall. We haven't done Marshall in a long time. Uh oh. Not curable. Oof. Well, he's young, so I think he'll he'll last for a little bit longer. I think it'll last long enough for him to become a, a child. Uh, uh, the the ruler. want him to be the son. They want him to be it. He'll have to wait, it looks like. Alright, so next, next episode we'll work on that. Okay, yeah, I guess I'll, that's a good call. I, I have him educating him. Because he's got super high intellect. But maybe we do... This guy instead. London. London McNeil. Oh, thank you, Crochet. I like that. But I thought learning is the most important. We have won our war here. Okay, well, let's do it. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever really done that route, so we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> Travers, that was good. It is what it is, man. Deal with it. Okay, we need to educate child. No. I want. I want. Well, he's, he doesn't have good... He doesn't have high martial skill. He has high prowess. His martial skill is... Well, it's still high. So I guess we'll go with this. Let's have fun. Let's try some stuff out. All right, so it looks like we got ourselves a spicy little start here, guys. Let's go ahead and roll some credits. We got some thank yous to give out. It was a good first episode here. We got a lot done. We got a lot of uh, little pieces moved around. We took up Shetland. So now we got to just uh, deal with with uh, the Suthriar. Let's take a look at some of those donations. Let me go ahead and give some thank yous out. We had quite a few here today, so go to the bottom of the list. Actually, I think they were all through here. Yeah, it looks like they were all through uh, Super Chat, so I can go through here. All right, so let's go to the top here. We got $20 from Richard LaMaru. La Thank you very much, man. A five pounder from Julian Dale. Noob223 with a $10 donation saying that it helps when it comes to grading, and I'm glad I can help out with that process. Uh, Jarl of the North with a $3 in total donation. Nigel Hall with a $5 donation. Talos, a brand new member of the channel. Welcome aboard, dude. Welcome to the family. Rooster Cogburn with a $10 in donation. Rocketman AE with a $5 donation. Flesson saying, hope your family is doing well. Support the Sparty. Guys, please go check out Flesson19 if you are liking Bannerlord content. He's got tons of it up all the time. Please, please, please go and check him out. The Big Dick Daddy from Cincinnati, Surreal Beliefs, dropping a $5 donation saying your beard looks well-maintained. P.S. I love you. P.S. I love you too. 
And Talos, again, after joining as a member, throws a two euro donation. David Danieluk with a four Canadian donation. And then Meng Ranax rounding us out with a two dollar. Oh, we got a last one, last minute one here from ED Sellers with a five dollar donation saying, Buck up, little cowboy. You murdered, you murdered Ivar the Boneless. I'm like, but we were having so much fun as our intrigue. It's so great to just kind of rip your way through everything. That Insula reduced intrigue by three. Well, I guess that's good to know because it's like intrigue minus three, so our intrigue was only thirteen. So it's like we were we weren't like at the pinnacle, right? So we have a we have a fun road ahead of us. We'll jump back on this maybe tomorrow, but definitely on Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday are our dedicated streaming days going forward at ten a.m., ten a.m., and eleven a.m. Pacific daytime. You too, Flesson. Thanks for watching, man. Thank you, Giovanni. No, Ivar's dead. We murdered him. I murdered him. It's his son now. Barrett Iverson. Revenger, thank you very much for watching. Talos, thank you again for becoming a new member. You too, Guinness. Thanks for jumping in. Connor, thank you as well. Rowinger with a last minute donation to 20 Norwegian Kronu slipping that in saying great stream. Thank you very much too, Rowinger. Always good to see you. Thank you, noob, and thank you again. Yes, Suthrayar will be in danger next stream. We'll have a lot of fun with them. Hopefully our boy king will be able to survive. He's got a he's got quite the uh quite the quite the road ahead of him. Thank you for the donation. Finally unlocked the street super, huh? Oh, Lagoon. I gotta have to check that out because I was thinking about getting it on uh Cold War. Thank you, Thomas Leaf. Have a good one, man. Alright guys, I'm gonna get myself some food, go take a look at a house, but have a good one. Enjoy your weekend, wash your hands, stay safe, stay away. But we'll be back here tomorrow or Tuesday with some more stream. But as always, have a good one and take care.